Well, I'm back with another episode of Top 5 Mods, a show where, as the name would indicate, I look at a Top 5 list of mods. And a whole lot has happened in the world of Fallout in the last week, so we're gonna jump straight into this week's list. At number 5 this week we got Weapons of Fate Ballistics Overall. So no, this mod does not add in a Holy Crusader Sword collection. It had me guessing there for a second actually. Instead it adds in more realistic bullet physics. So in a vanilla game bullets fly in a straight line and hit their target instantaneously. Now in real life bullets have dropped due to a thing called gravity and this mod aims to mimic that. So I got out a happy volunteer to fully test this out. So with this mod you have to compensate for bullet drop by aiming more upwards the further your target is away. So once you figure that out, you briefly look away at a footlock to grab some extra ammo and you realize Imposter Preston has suddenly reattached his head and somehow he got together an alien army. That's uh, pretty spooky stuff right there. Now the drop characteristics are dependent on caliber so the bigger rounds are gonna fall out of the air a lot quicker. Whereas small calibers will just breeze through the wind like it's nothing. So if you like your stuff realistic and you're a fan of sniping, then this is definitely a mod you want to be taking a look at. I mean, we're still lacking wind compensation, uh, travel time, humidity, Coriolis effect, the orbit of the moon, but uh, that might just be overdoing it a tad bit, so uh, we'll stick with this. Anyhow, now that we're done with all that realism, we've got the Star Trek Assault Phaser at number 4. So as the name tells you, this mod adds in the Star Trek Assault Phaser. To grant this bad boy, you'll first need access to the Institute. You teleport inside, take the first left, then another left to the Advanced Systems Lab, teleport through the door, and then take a left to the Shooting Range. There, you'll be able to pick up your very own Assault Phaser. Apparently, those Institute scientists have not been sitting still. So it's small, it's black, and it makes a pew sound. I mean, I won't pretend like I know much about Star Trek Phasers, because I really don't. But it definitely looks good. The reloading animation works and you can even modify this thing to fire fusion cells. It's definitely just enough to take out a posse of Myrler kings that are charging towards you. Just about enough. Fortunately, you don't really have to reload this thing all that often. But while we're on the topic of Star Trek, we're gonna be using Teleport Everywhere. This mod allows you to teleport anywhere. Or kill yourself and clone yourself if you believe some internet theories out there. But it is a pretty simple mod actually, instead of fast traveling, you teleport. So this means not as much time goes by when you fast travel from place to place. So you can teleport to Vault 111, just because you can. Then you teleport to a Brahmin and shoot one of his heads off. Then you teleport on over to Red Rocket to say hello to Ringo. All in the blink of an eye. And you also look really cool. The one downside though is that it also happens in interiors, when you go from door to door, which gets rather annoying quick actually. But you still look really cool, so it's uh, probably worth it. At number 3 we've got Faction Housing Overall, Fault 81. Yes, I'm looking for a new house again, I decided to be nice for once, so I gave Red Rocket to Ringo, so he can have his very own place to sleep. So now I'm actually looking for that perfect house again, so I decided to go on a housing tour. So first I stumbled upon this house, so this mod upgrades the room that you get in Vault 81 after you finish the Vault's questline. With this room it actually looks like they're grateful for your services. But it's a beautiful, tightly packed room yet again. As you enter you got a full desk with a terminal and a Mr. Handy model. Then behind that you got a TV, some books and some plants. Over on the right you got a bed, a dresser and two lockers and that's about when you realize you don't actually want to live in this place. I mean it looks nice, but you can hear old people complaining through the floor. Nobody in the vault wants to help run this place. Patience, old man. We'll find someone. And they just will not shut up. Anyways, the kitchen also looks really nice. The bathroom, which for some reason has a plant in it, also looks really nice. But the elderly just had to ruin it. So instead of underground, I went looking for a house above ground. And I found the den. So this house is located just southeast of the institute, right next to the river. If you found a door with the den written above it, you're probably close. So you teleport in, you go past the lasers, and you take a gander at the interior. So off on the left you've got a power armor station, right next to that a sitting area with a fireplace. Moving on you've got a desk with a beautiful Boston map. And then over on the right side you've got an armory and crafting corner. But that's not it, you've also got an upstairs area. You first got the kitchen, which has enough liquor to last you for about a week, maybe two if you ration your vodka. You've also got a safe wall to stash all your caps some beautiful roses and even an infirmary. 
This house literally has everything, so it's pretty good looking, although it feels maybe a tad bit too densely packed. It makes me a bit claustrophobic. So I re-evaluated my options and uh, decided to continue my search for the perfect home. Underground was just not good enough, neither was above ground apparently. So what about up in the air? Well, Skyship Welder adds in a floating base. You first go to the Skyship Base bunker all the way north on the map. You go inside and then you teleport to your very own Sky Base. As you enter, you are greeted by two life-size Brother of Steel figurines. I was actually scared there for two seconds. I thought it was a trap. I thought the Brotherhood had finally tracked me down. But nope, they're just figurines. Then you venture forth into the living room slash bedroom area. Off on the left, you've got a bed, and then right next to the window, you've got a couch and a TV. Then off on the right, you've got a dinner table with a prep meal and a little kitty. If you turn around, you've got a hatch, which leads to a storage area, and this storage area connects to a walkway. And on this walkway, you are able to see an inferior sky base in the distance. Because obviously, this sky base is superior since it's higher. Anyways, the left door takes you to the bathroom, and the right door takes you to the kitchen, which has some melons and pumpkins stored away. The back door takes you to the outside of the ship, where you can attempt some parkouring, although those guardrails are probably up there for a reason, so I would not advise that. Now, downstairs there are some crafting stations and storage containers, but it also connects to the bridge. On the bridge, you can select one of three locations you want your sky base to be located, so it almost makes you feel like you're actually mobile. So overall, this is a very cool mod, and a really good looking house too, it's very unique. And you just can't quite beat the view, the only annoying thing is the cat, but uh, that can be dealt with. At number 2 this week, we've got Scavenged NCR Armor. At this point, you've probably been able to guess that I'm a fan of NCR Ranger Veteran Armor, as we've been through about 7 flavors of it so far, but this one yet again looks very good. To get your hands on this one, you're first gonna have to venture into the glowing sea, so east of the Crater of Adam, you'll find Skylane's Flight 1665. You will need to find the biggest piece of fuselage with the cockpit attached to it, and then go up into the cockpit, and very casually undress the deck guy in the corner. And then you've got the armor, it's slightly modular, it comes with two hip pistol holsters, a shoulder holster, and a back knife sheath. And if you don't like the short code, there is also a long code. So overall this armor is very cool, it looks great, and all these holsters really even make you more tactical. It's the ideal piece of armor, although it's probably not very explosion resistant. But maybe the coolness will shield you. At number 1 this week we've got Jaguar MSX 200 LMG, so this adds in a big fat light machine gun. And when that was not good enough already, it also has two barrels for double the damage output. By default it fires 5.56, but you can change that to 38 or 5mm depending on where you invested your caps in. And the rest of the gun you can customize 8 bit. You can add a few scopes and a suppressor, but nothing too crazy. But it looks very good, it sounds great, and the reloading animation fits right in there. It's really good for just holding down that trigger. Just perfect for taking out a cult single-handedly. And after you kill them all, you just gotta make sure that everybody's dead, so you spray through that sheet metal just a tad bit. Just to make sure. You can never fire too many rounds, basically. As they say, accuracy by volume is the best type of accuracy. Well, that was it for the top 5, but we also got some bonus mods this week. Because we can't go through life without bonus mods. So first up we got Navi brand new power armor. So this mod adds in a new type of power armor, which looks very weird. I honestly don't really know what it's supposed to look like. I mean, apparently it's supposed to make you look like a cat, which uh, I can sort of see with the tail thing and all that, but I still don't really see it. But at least it looks interesting, I guess. It's just uh, kind of weird. Anyway, speaking of tails, below the belt allows you to shoot people straight in the dick. This mod opens up a brand new groin section when you use that. Now, I know I may seem to some of you like somewhat of a cruel person, what's with me having a habit of uh, blowing up cats and some kids every now and again. But I mean, this mod goes even a bit too far for me. I mean, this is just cruel right here. Never mind me murdering kids and cats and murdering the entirety of Diamond City. Straight in the dick. That's just gotta hurt. Yeah. Anyways, that was it for this week's mod, so join me next week where I will be taking a look at another list of mods. Will I be homeless again? Did my cat really die from ferrite poisoning? And will I purchase dick armor? All of those questions are awaiting answers. So until next time. See, so yeah, I mean, shooting people straight in the dick, that's just giving me memories of playing Sniper... What was this game, actually? Anyways, you get what game I mean. It's the one Elite Sniper game. It's like Elite Sniper V2. It's, uh, it's kind of a confusing name. But anyways, the point of the game was is that you could shoot Nazis as well as Russian soldiers in Berlin straight in the fucking nuts. And they had this like 
x-ray camera where you could see it in full detail too. You could see each individual testicle exploding. That was just brutal, man. That just gave you that EBGB feeling where you're like, eh, so glad my testicles did not blow up. That's just gotta be painful. But yeah, that, that is probably pretty much it for the rambling. Basically, the point of this day was uh, make sure your testicles don't explode, basically. Anyways, until next time, also don't forget to watch the video on the bottom left corner and subscribe. We are nearly at 100k. My god. It's like 100 times 1,000 people. That's a lot of people right there.